The first thing is we've been in an everything bubble, I think, that um, a lot of money has flowed into virtually everything. Um, historically low interest rates, even zero rates have um, precipitated that bubble. Um, you've also had a lot of changes in the business world. Technology has um, accelerated, if anything, and you've seen disruption of all kinds of businesses. Hi everyone, welcome to Clone Compounding, where our mission is to learn from others in order to achieve financial independence. In this video, let's take a look at the summary of the 2023 annual letter by legendary investor Seth Klarman to its clients. Seth Klarman has told investors in his hedge fund that the Federal Reserve's response to the 2008 financial crisis and the ensuing decade plus of low interest rates had helped erect a financial fantasy land. A consequence-free era of virtually unlimited low-cost capital had come to an end, Klarman, the head of Bopost Group and a prominent figure in investing. A boom based on easy money policies will inevitably contain the seeds of its own destruction. The downbeat outlook cuts against a rally that has sent major global stock benchmarks soaring this year, as sliding inflation figures give investors confidence that the Fed could soon stop lifting interest rates. Klarman likened the sharp rise in interest rates last year to kryptonite, saying it had finally helped deflate the everything bubble. Including the unraveling of investments in unprofitable so-called growth companies that had soared during the pandemic boom but had little inherent value. These included scores of profitless early-stage companies that could have come public only in a bubble. A staggering volume of bonds that sported cartoonishly low yields, most of the absurd, meme stocks. And stocks such as Tesla, intensely hyped, egregiously overvalued, and priced only for the smoothest of rides, whose shares dropped by nearly two-thirds, he wrote. Shares of companies that had risen to record highs in 2020 and 2021 deflated sharply last year. Dealing a blow to investors across the venture capital, crypto and technology industries who had plowed money into businesses with high revenue growth but little or no profits. Time spent on due diligence came to seem to them a hindrance to maximal capital deployment. And the usual warning signs of excess, financial extravagance, a proliferation of dubious business models, and obvious red flags, were mocked or ignored, he wrote. Despite the rebound in markets this year, Klarman warned that last year's sell-off probably has further to go, and that a sovereign debt crisis could lie ahead. If you are enjoying this video, please smash the like button and subscribe for more such videos. Klarman spent much of his letter critiquing the Fed's response to the financial crisis. When the central bank cut interest rates close to zero and began hoovering up treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. The policy dramatically reduced the returns on safer investments, such as U.S. sovereign debt, and prompted many investors to buy riskier and higher-yielding securities. Microscopic interest rates, like grains of sand at the beach, had gotten into everything, he wrote. The central bankers had fallen behind the curve, having failed to anticipate that the massive expansion of the Fed's balance sheet would be difficult to reverse and that a decade-plus of low interest rate policies had finally run aground. He warned that persistently low rates have a harmful effect on investor behavior, with many asset managers moving into illiquid assets, including venture capital and private equity. An entire new generation of investors may well have come of age never having actually experienced an economic downturn. A protracted market downdraft or interest rates above rock-bottom levels, he wrote. Like Haley's Comet, these are things many investors have heard about but may never have actually seen or can't quite imagine. Bopost benefited from the market volatility in 2022, netting $1.6 billion from its hedging, which helped offset losses in its stock portfolio, including Just Eat Takeaway, Google owner Alphabet and Instagram parent Meta. 
Klarman told clients the firm had added to positions in several of its public equity bets after prices declined. As well as investing in three Chinese companies that he said were extremely undervalued. It is the biggest exposure to China that Opost has had in many years and comes at a time when many other investors are pulling back from the region. We know that one of these Chinese companies is New Oriental Education. China's education sector companies were severely impacted by the regulations that came out in 2021. So far, this year, New Oriental is up more than 60%. For now, that's it from us. Hope you enjoyed and learned from this video.